Hi, it's Nick Pizza again with another training video for water plant and distribution system operators. This is part of our hydraulic series. Today's topic is velocities. I know, I know, one of your favorite topics. Math is used and we all hate math, don't we? I'm gonna try to make this palatable for everybody. This material that we're putting out is needed for your exams. You have to be able to do this arithmetic and this math. So if you bear with me, I'm gonna bring up some slides and share the screen with you. There we go. Okay, as I mentioned, hydraulics, velocity. Previously, we did flow rates, we did detention times. Today, we're gonna to practice velocity. Again, this is a series of license exam training modules on hydraulics for distribution and plant operators. As for all of our hydraulics, we need to be able to do the math and uh, to be able to work the hydraulic principles for a variety of ways. We need the math for detention times. We need to be able to quantify pressure and head on pumps in our elevated tanks. We have to do math for velocities and flow rates when we're moving water through the system. And of course, we have to calculate the amount of energy it takes to move that water, the horsepower it takes to move that water through our distribution systems. All of that is necessary. And of course, some of those calculations in hydraulics are even necessary in order to do the other calculations that we have to do in our water plants, such as dosage and feed rates efficiencies of our systems, cost to operate, that type of thing. But today is a basic operation for velocity and we'll get started with some examples for you. We're trying to make this as palatable as possible. Say that again, palatable and possible. Say that three times. All right, velocity is a term we use in hydraulics that describes the speed at which the water is flowing for a given unit of time. So there's two entities there. There's the speed that the volume of water is flowing the amount of time that it's doing that speed over. We gotta work those two things out. Now in the water system math, when we get a velocity problem, they often just denote the letter V for speed or velocity. So when you see capital V, it's not volume, it is velocity. So remember that when you take your exams. V must be calculated determining two things. The area or A, and they'll denote A for area, of the vessel through which the water is flowing. And of course the flow rate or Q, and we did that in a previous video, the Q of the water moving through the vessel. So in order to determine the speed at which water is moving through our systems from point A to point B, for example, we gotta know the size of the vessel, the pipe or the tank that it's flowing through. And we gotta know the amount of water per unit of time. The formula for velocity then is V equal Q over A or Q divided by A. So it looks like that V equals Q divided by A. And if this looks familiar to you, it's because it's exactly the same formula that we used in the previous video, which was for flow rate. It's just inverted. So it's gonna look like the same equation. The Q, the A, and the V are three entities that are the same. So when we do velocity equations, the principles that applied for flow rates also apply for velocity. So we need to go over those. You'll need to find the square area of the vessel through which the water is flowing. So for cylinders, we can use 0 0.785 times the diameter squared, or you can use pi 3.14 times the radius squared. And of course, for rectangular channels, we would multiply the width times the depth. So you're gonna come up with a square area, just a plane in two dimensions. You don't have the third dimension yet, and you don't need it for velocity right now. So get, get used to the fact that you're getting the square area of the plane of water in the channel or the vessel. Let's say, okay, here's a velocity calculation example. It's a simple one. They're asking us, what is the water velocity in feet per second in a pipe that has a square area of 0.19625 square feet? And the water moving through it is moving at a flow rate of 0 0.589 cubic feet per second. Now, as I mentioned in other videos, if you wanna work this out, pause the video now and do your math on a piece of paper, use your calculator, and then come back and start the video to see if you get the right answer. So I'm gonna move on from here, fair warning. We're gonna use the velocity equation, V equals Q divided by A. The area of the pipe was given to us at 0 0.19625 square feet. We didn't have to calculate that. Not gonna get this easy in the future. Flow rate was given at 0 0.589 cubic feet per second. So it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers for the letters that we have. The velocity is gonna be 0 0.589 cubic feet per second 
divided by the square foot area, which was 0 0.19625. So it's gonna come out to about three foot per second. If you remember from other videos that I've mentioned to you, typically when engineers design pipes for velocity, they're gonna to try to be somewhere between one and five feet per second. So again, when you're doing a velocity question on your exam, if you come out with 50 feet per second, maybe you've done your math wrong, you need to go back and check. It should be probably somewhere between one and five feet per second. Notice that the square feet in the denominator cancels out the square feet in the, or the, the square feet in the denominator, sorry, cancels out the square feet in the numerator. It's gonna leave you only with feet per second. So that's why you've gotta get uh, the cubic feet on top and the square feet on the bottom so you divide properly. So there's some things that we're gonna to have to remember when we're using the formula V equals Q divided by A. Let's go over those. First of all, the area of the vessel is usually going to need to be calculated. In the last example I did for you, I gave you the area, but you're not gonna get that lucky on your exams. The vessel through which V is being calculated is typically a pipe or a channel. So for pipe, you use the formula pi r squared or 0 0.785 times the diameter squared, as I mentioned. And for the rectangular channel, we're gonna use the depth times the width. And we, in these equations that we use when we calculate the area and the flow units have to match. If the area is in square feet, for example, the flow has to be in cubic feet per unit of time, typically cubic feet per second, or cubic feet per minute. You cannot divide gallon per minute by square feet. You got to convert first. So in this case, you convert the gallon per minute to cubic feet per unit of time. And when you get an answer, you may need to convert your answers back and forth between feet per second and centimeters per minute or some such uh, metric equation. So remember that. Your units of flow and area must match in order to do this equation. Now, velocity in circular and rectangular vessels looks a little bit like this. And I showed you the same graphic for the uh, flow rate calculations. When we're doing a velocity in a, in a rectangular channel, remember we deal with the square foot area first by, by multiplying the width on the bottom times the depth of the water in the channel. And you notice at top, you have the small v there for velocity. That velocity, the faster, the bigger it gets, the faster the water is moving. This works the same way in a circular channel. We have the same square foot area of, 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 of the pipe, just as we did in a channel. We've got to multiply pi times our radius squared or 0.75 times the diameter squared. And again, we have a velocity for how fast does it take that plane of water at the beginning where A is moving to the right a little bit. The faster it moves there, the more water is moving per unit of time. So that's what velocity tells us if we calculate it correctly. So let's try a calculation where velocity has to be calculated and converted. I ask you this question here. What's the velocity in feet per second in a 24 inch water main when the water is flowing at 6,060 gallons per minute? So right away, you should, you should have your ears up. You should be thinking feet, in gallons, I can't do that. I've got to do cubic feet. I've got to change it gallons for cubic feet or whatever back and forth. So remember your, your units have to match. So for the formula V equals Q over A, the area of the 24 inch main can be calculated this way. 0 0.785 times the diameter squared equals 3.14 square feet, or you could have done 3.14 times the radius squared, which would still be 3.14 square feet. Now the flow rate is given to me as 6,060 gallons per minute, not cubic feet. So when I set up the equation of V equal Q over A, and I put the 6,060 gallon per minute divided by the 3.14 square feet, that's not gonna work. You gotta change that gallons per minute or that square feet, you gotta do something to make them match. So what I chose to do is convert the gallons per minute to cubic feet per second. And I did it this way. 6,060 gallon per minute, multiplied by the fact that there are 60 seconds in one minute, so one minute over 60, and that there are 7.48 gallons in one cubic foot, cubic feet over 7.48, comes out to 13.5 cubic feet per second. So now I can take the, the formula V equal Q over A and take 13.5 cubic feet per second that we just calculated and divide it by the square foot area. Remember, cubic feet in the numerator, square feet in the denominator, to cancel each other out, leave only feet per second, and I've come up with 4.3 feet per second. Here's a calculation for velocity using metric units. Excuse me while I take a little drink here. This showed up on a class three exam in Ohio years ago. In fact, the one that I took back in the 1980s. What's the velocity in meters per second in a pipe with a diameter of 42 centimeters? 
a flow rate of 7,800 cubic meters per day. <clears throat> now, when you see something like this, don't be tempted to change metric to, to English units. Just stay in the metric units. It's a lot easier and you won't get mixed up in your calculations. And here's how I set this up. I'm looking for velocity. And I said, there's no need to convert these to English system. I know that to move around in the metric system, everything's in units of 10 or 100 or 1,000. The centimeter just happens to be 1 100th of a meter or 0 0.01 meters. So that 42 centimeter diameter that they gave me works out to 0 0.42 meters. So now I've got cubic meters per day and I'm working in meters on the bottom. I've just got to get a square area in meters now. So let's set that up. B equals Q over A. I've got 7,800 cubic meters per day divided by the square area. And I calculated the square area by multiplying 0 0.785 times 0 0.42 meters times 0 0.42 meters, which is going to give me square meters in the bottom, which is exactly what I wanted. So V equals 7,800 cubic meters per day divided by the 0 0.1385 square meters, or 56,317.7 meters per day. Now, if I want that in the answer that they were looking for, which was meters per second, I would set it up at 56,317.7 meters per day. Multiply that by the fact that in one day, there are 1,440 minutes. In one minute, there are 60 seconds. Everything's going to cancel out, leaving me in meters per second, and I come up with 0 0.65. Uh, for the more ambitious of you, you could go to the next slide, which has the uh, conversion charts. Convert that meters per second to center it to um, inches. I'm sorry, to feet per second. And you should come up with somewhere around two, two and two point one or two point two, if you do it right. Try it out, and you'll notice that, as I mentioned, everything should be between one and five feet per second. So if you come out with something like uh, twenty meters per second, that's going to calculate out to a lot of feet per second. You don't want that, so make sure you go back and do your math. And the last slide that I share with you, of course, is the conversion factors table that I've given you in the other slides, in the other presentations that you can use. Uh, so for example, in the bottom line there, if you want to change inches to centimeters, you multiply 2.54. I want to change days to minutes, I multiply by 1440. So this is a conversion chart. These numbers on the right never change. You always use them to convert from one to the other. That's just a handy chart to have. So that's the end of the velocity presentation. I'm going to back out of this now. Stop the video and be sure you download this. Take a look at it along with the other videos that we've been putting up for hydraulics. And when you study them all together, you should be in good shape. We still have to do pumping, horsepower, and those calculations coming up next.